Major funding for Immortality Now was provided through an educational grant from Hotsi Compounding Pharmacy, one of the first in the nation to receive accreditation from the PCAB. Hotsi specializes in compounding biologically identical hormones. All their preparations are lactose-free, preservative-free, and consistently exceed USP standards. To find out more, go to HotsiHWC.com. Hi, this is Dr. Ryan Klatz, and I'm here with you today for Immortality Now. Today's guest will be Chip Stanbury. Chip is the CEO from SpectraCell Laboratories. Nice to speak with you, Chip. Nice to speak with you, Ron. And specifically, the purpose of this broadcast is to bring our listeners uh, information on what really works, what can um, enhance the quality and the quantity of life uh, right now. That's why it's Immortality Now. So tell us uh, what you're doing in your lab and tell us uh, what's new and what's exciting and what our uh, doctors really want to know about. Well, what's exciting and new in our lab is really the first thing that we built this laboratory around, which is our intracellular functional micronutrient testing. And what was new about it then, 20 years ago, is still new today, and that is it's the only functional intracellular technique for measuring micronutrient deficiencies, uh, amino acids, antioxidants, vitamins, minerals, and the like. And because that measurement is at the cellular level, it really is giving the physician and the patient an individualized look and a targeted measurement of nutritional deficiencies that need to be repleted. And uh, as you probably know, the, the literature these days has really demonstrated that nutritional deficiencies play a important critical role in wellness, prevention, and therapy for various chronic diseases. So that has been the flagship of SpectraCell. Uh, it's still our flagship today, and we'll maybe talk in a moment about some of the other tests that we've introduced more recently that surround that micronutrient test. There is a, a great disillusionment right now on the part of uh, many physicians with regard to some of the um, testing, specifically around cardiovascular risk, uh, also around SNPs, because these tests are very interesting, but when you look at uh, long-term demographic studies, we're finding that changing um, the parameters, such as um, um, homocysteine levels and uh, 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 markers of inflammation, that these are not leading to changes in overall risk of uh, cardiovascular events, maybe not even around the risk of cancers or other degenerative diseases. So in this time of a little bit of disillusionment, what is it that you're doing that you're finding that you have great uh, faith in? Well, I I'm going to come back to that micronutrient testing. Let me address a little more specifically the, the issues you've mentioned. We do do advanced lipoprotein particle testing for cardiovascular risk. Uh, we do do various uh, genetic uh, uh, testing for the MTHFR gene, the APOE gene, which relates to cardiovascular risk. Uh, perhaps most interestingly in that arena is our uh, genetic test for telomere. Uh, we we're able to, we're the only lab in the United States that measures uh, telomere length. And as you probably know, there is a, a body of evidence that demonstrates that that uh, shortening telomere is a very precise uh, biomarker for cellular degeneration, uh, cellular aging, and in terms of helping the patient and the physician manage that condition, that telomere test can really serve as a wake-up call uh, for lifestyle changes, diet, nutrition, exercise. So the telomere test is one facet uh, that really can awaken the patient and the physician to the need for action in, in terms of managing the aging process. I will come back to that nutritional test in terms of what can really immediately help a patient, help a physician deal with the patient's wellness and health status, and that is by simply identifying specific personal nutritional deficiencies and then repleting those deficiencies with the exact uh, right amount of vitamin or a mineral or an uh, antioxidant. We've seen among the physicians we serve dramatic and consistent changes in the patient's health uh, when targeted nutritional repletion becomes part of the, the physician's program. 
What sort of changes have you seen? What, what sort of things are documented in your uh, uh, in the medical records? We've seen a variety of, of, of health conditions, including cardiovascular disease, osteoporosis, multiple sclerosis, uh, fibromyalgia, uh, autistic conditions in children. Uh, th those are some of the disease conditions where the several thousand physicians that we serve have seen direct and rather immediate, by immediate I might mean within a six month period of time, change in those conditions that I mentioned uh, in their patients. So that really is, we think, helping guide physicians to something that's effective therapy, cost effective therapy, and produces real outcomes uh, with their patients. Getting back to the telomere test, now, telomeres and telomeres are very exciting areas of uh, research in both cancer and aging. And I'm very happy that uh, Spectracell is one of the leaders in, uh, in this uh, new form of testing. As a matter of fact, uh, you're probably one of the first clinical labs to offer that uh, to physicians uh, in the uh, uh, metabolic medicine uh, anti-aging marketplace. Am I correct? You are correct. We actually were the first lab to introduce telomere testing, uh, and I believe to this day we're the only lab in the United States uh, that offers telomere testing. And uh, it was considered somewhat space age and uh, new when we introduced it about three years ago. Uh, it has met with growing use by physicians. There's also a lot of patient interest. Uh, and by the way, that patient interest may be initially was driven by what one might call the sensational aspect of predicting life expectancy. To us as a clinical laboratory, that's not nearly as important as identifying the degree of cellular aging or deterioration, and thus, as I mentioned earlier, really providing for the physician and the patient a guideline, a wake-up call that says cellular dysfunction or deterioration is a problem with this patient, and we have to take all the steps we can uh, to reverse that. So uh, we're pleased that we were able to introduce that testing in the United States, and it uh, is becoming one of the more sought-after items in our uh, menu. Okay, Chip, so tell us what's on the, uh, what's on the menu for 2014-2015. What new areas are you moving into? We've moved into several new areas while still retaining our personality and identity as a specialty lab. Uh, we have, uh, in the past few years, introduced a lipoprotein particle measurement test that's one of the most precise and accurate uh, in that field. Uh, we've introduced uh, two or three new uh, genetic tests. We've also introduced recently uh, various tests for hormone function, and we believe that hormonal balance uh, is part of the overall solution, overall picture we can provide the physician that includes hormonal balance, genetic predisposition, uh, cardiovascular risk, uh, inflammation, and nutrition. So for us, what we're doing in 2014 is attempting to do an even better job of tying together these individual lab results into a true integrated solution for the doctor that really addresses anti-aging, wellness, prevention, and that's going to be our direction in 2014. In your experience uh, as a CEO of the lab, what specific uh, activities or measurements uh, do you think are most important for the physician or for the patient who is just beginning an anti-aging medicine or metabolic medicine program? That's a great question. Of course, I'm prejudiced. Uh, we really do believe that our intracellular functional micronutrient testing should be the beginning foundation of a laboratory workup for the patient and the physician that's interested in anti-aging medicine. Uh, you know, Ron, because we measure these deficiencies at the intracellular level in white cells, we're really going a step further than just a simple serum measurement of quantities of micronutrients, antioxidants, amino acids, etc. And by looking at the cellular function, we're really able to tell the physician and the patient to strengthen your immune function, which of course, as you well know, is really at the core of health, to strengthen your, strengthen your immune function, correcting those specific functional deficiencies that we've seen at the white cell level 
is, in our opinion, the best way to start a program of wellness and anti-aging management. Then, of course, there are many tests, uh, several of which we don't offer ourselves, uh, many tests that can be built onto that foundation in providing uh, an overall picture of the patient's health. But w we believe, and we have witnessed in clinical practice, starting with that nutritional assessment uh, at an individualized level is, we think, the core to that form of practice. Well, thank you, Chip. It was enlightening. Um, I'm happy to hear that uh, SpectraCell is moving ahead in so many uh, different uh, areas and that uh, you're showing leadership in the field. Um, some of these tests are actually even new to me, so uh, I'm interested in learning more. Thank you. Ron, thank you. It's a pleasure to chat with you. This is Dr. Ron Klatz for Immortality Now. We're here in Orlando, Florida at the American Academy of Anti-Aging Medicine World Congress. We have uh, over 2,000 physicians and scientists from around the world, one of uh, the largest conferences in history in the science of anti-aging medicine. And I'm very happy and proud to have as my guest today for Immortality Now, Dr. Steve Holtze of the Holtze Health and Wellness Centers in Houston, Texas. Dr. Holtze is really renowned in the field of preventive medicine. Uh, he's uh, not just a tireless, uh, hardworking physician uh, trying to prevent disease, working in anti-aging, working in preventive medicine, working in nutritional medicine, but Dr. Holtze brings the best of conventional medicine as well to the table and I think as importantly, Dr. Holtze is a true fighter, a patriot, a man of the people. Dr. Holtze is very involved in, uh, in statewide politics and national politics uh, in the Republican Party and he has some very interesting insights into the politics of medicine. It's been said that there are more politics in medicine than there are in politics. Well, that sure is true. And, and uh, the currency of politics, my friends, is money. And it just so happens that the, that the old adage holds true, who has the gold rules? And we are in, uh, in the business of natural approaches to health. All of us here at the Anti-Aging uh, Conference, we're all in, uh, approaching health naturally. We want to do things most naturally so people get well. And we want people to have a choice to have natural approaches to health. Unfortunately, we have a rather large opponent, and that opponent happens to be Big Pharma. Now, here's where the crook comes in. Because of the power of conventional medicine, which is in bed with Big Pharma, because Big Pharma underwrites all the conventional medical journals and the societies and all their conventions, conventional medicine is going to do the bidding of Big Pharma. That's where the problem comes in because physicians like myself and Dr. Klatz and the 26,000 physician members here come under scrutiny, a tremendous amount of scrutiny from state boards and by competitors, our competitive physicians, conventional physicians, who oftentimes are allowed in many states to file confidential complaints against physicians that are practicing complementary, holistic, functional metabolic medicine, whatever you want to call it. Doctors who are taking natural approaches to health come under scrutiny from state medical boards because of complaints that are filed. And we know that in the terms of bioidentical hormones, which is a backbone of a lot of what anti-aging medicine uh, doctors do, has come under tremendous scrutiny, not only from state boards, but also from the FDA, the Food and Drug Administration, because compounded hormones, or natural bioidentical hormones, are competition to pharmaceutical drugs. So what I've been involved with, and I'm just telling you from my experience, what I've been involved with in Texas is working in, in filing suits against the Texas State Medical Board that they denied legal due process to physicians who have complaints filed against them, okay? You ought to know who filed the complaint. That seems fair enough. It's Fifth Amendment. So we filed suits on that. We filed suits against so the... So essentially what you're trying to do is you're trying to stop the practice of these quote-unquote anonymous, anonymous complaints. complaints. That's right. That really often times come not from a patient, almost never from a patient. Usually from another physician. Usually from another physician or a, a shill right. working for uh, the, the PR companies behind the pharmaceuticals right. that are trying to get rid of their competitors or what they perceive to be their competitors, which in many cases could be a family doctor who's just trying to do the best he can put together a formulation for his patient that's identical, bioidentical, and also custom formulated for the patient for their 
personalized health care. Now the second thing that we filed a group of us, I own a compounding pharmacy as well, and we do bioidentical hormones, and we filed a suit against the FDA in 2004 because the FDA was trying to drive compounding pharmacists out of business and doing away with bioidentical hormones. We filed a suit, which was finally settled in 2011 to our benefit. The FDA's position was is that all compounded preparations, this is hard to believe, in court of law they said all, kind of, all compounded preparations are illegal, but we use discretionary enforcement. Well, what kind of law is that? You, discretionary enforcement, that means if you're a good boy, and play along with them, right. they're they'll not going to shut you But otherwise, they'll shut you down. So we went to court and we got that overturned. Now, this is all very important because if you don't have freedom of choice for your health care, if you can't select the type of doctor you go to, the type of medicine he practices, if you can't select the pharmaceutical products you take for your own body, the nutritional products that you have for your own body, well, then what happens to you? Where does that put you? Well, that's why our, uh, the physicians those physicians that are watching this program now and the patients need to encourage physicians to take a stand to organize and join those groups like A4M, American Academy of Anti-Aging Medicine. I'm, I'll give a plug for another organization, the sure. American uh, Association of Physicians and Surgeons is a very free enterprise pro uh, doctor group that is, fights the uh, that fights the FDA and, and the now, federal how government. How did we get into this position? How did we go from uh, a, a system that traditionally, you know, the doctors ran the show, the doctors wrote the prescriptions, the doctors did the research, the doctors treated the patients, and they were the ones who were the decision makers. How did we get into well, a situation tell you what happened. So, where, where tell the you doctor what, has no power? Here's what happened. No authority. It's real simple. The businessmen got together, called insurance business guys, said, gosh, we could, we could take over this and all the money that comes through, we could put it through our hands and then we could piecemeal it to the doctors. So it was the insurance companies that came up with the eyes, PPOs and HMOs and, and capitation fees. So doctors, instead of getting a fee for service, get an X amount of dollars. On an average, I think, last time I checked, it was five or six dollars per patient, per month, okay? Per capitation fee per month. So, so the doctor gets maybe $72, anybody signs up his program. Well, he can't afford to see him for that. No, he certainly can't so, afford to pay and, for his office, his and nurse, that, his malpractice, his the, continuing medical education, the uh, electricity, the now, air conditioning. You, you cannot do it under the this, this, this situation and, where the establishment, the medical insurance companies, the government, is essentially putting control. price controls exactly. on your practice. And what happens, and you probably know this, if you are in an HMO or PPO, you call up, and you have a sore throat or you got a back pain or something, oh, we'll see you in three or four weeks. Believe it or not, if you're a private pay patient, not in an HMO, you call that same doctor's office, they have skill schedule in that day. So it puts you off. Anyway, that's what happened. The insurance companies took it over. And I don't want to sound like a conspir conspiratorial theorist or anything like that, but let me just tell you what happens. The people that sit on the board of directors, the insurance companies interlock with the people that sit on the board of directors of the pharmaceutical companies. Just one big interlocking deal and on, on Wall Street. This is a money-making system that they have set up. It's not a system about wellness. It's about a system about letting people be sick and stay sick so you can continually treat them. That's why you need to have, you need to always, with your elected officials, make sure that they will support your right to choose the type of health care you want, that you won't be mandated to have to have. If you want conventional care, that's your right. If you want to go and take drugs for the rest of your life and don't want to get at the underlying cause, you want a pill for your problem, that's your right to do that. But on the other hand, if you want to go to a physician who wants to offer alternative approaches that will help you get well and stay well, you ought to have that right too. And so you need to really question your, uh, your, your candidates for state rep, state senator, U.S. Congress, U.S. Senator, you need demand from them that they allow you to have these health rights because, because if you don't, they're going to take them away and you'll only get one type of care and it'll be mandated. Ultimately, if Obama has his way and Obama system has his way, it'll be a one payer system run by the government and the government will determine what kind of care you get. And that's so much better for the bureaucrats and so much worse for, for the, for the people. people. Immortality Now was made possible in part by Hotsi Compounding Pharmacy, the real hormone experts. To find out more, go to HotsiHWC.com.